Um, but we wanted to take a minute and, and have one of our team captains, who's also one of our teachers, um, who has been with us forever, um, who is um, also one of our top fundraiser, fundraisers with his team. Um, Eddie, tell us a little bit about his team, his journey, why he's supporting, how he gets all his money, etc. So, Eddie, thank you. Hi everybody, how are you doing? Be feeding, please. Don't be get out and get some food. Uh, I look a little different, so I might look a little disheveled. I retired two years ago from Universal after 31 and a half years. And I've been with Naomi for 14 years. Donna, back there, Paula, Barbara, there's so many great people. I got involved because my mom had an illness for probably 50 years. And I couldn't quite understand it. Got involved with NAMI from my brother-in-law, Larry Rod. We teach a uh, state class. We teach a family to family in September and October. And, uh, and it's really changed my life. But, you know, what I really want to hit home is at Universal, I would just literally shake people down. They're like, what is this guy talking about? Team members, executives, I was executive there. And we, we brought in a lot of money. If you have a conviction and you believe in something that's dear to your heart, then you should give to that. Because your really life, spiritually speaking, is about what you do for others. It's not what you have. It's not what you own. It's not your new car. It's not your motorcycle. It's not your paddle boards. Trust me. The point is that this organization, Grassroots, there's no federal funding yet, and there's a lot of people in this room that we need your help. You're like, well, what can I do? People are like, Eddie, how have you been so successful? In six weeks, I've probably gotten $3,500. Pound in the payment. When you believe in something in your heart, and you believe the cause and the great things that NAMI does, it will pay off. And we say it every year. Every year we say it. Mental health right now is the biggest need in the world. But the thing is, it is working. Like ending the silence in schools. When Don and them talked about it years ago, I'm like, what? And I went to one out by one of the high schools out by UCF, and I was amazed how much attention and how much how many people were following it and how many people came forward. Because a lot of times, remember for 50, 60 years, we called it a stigma. People were afraid, neighbors were afraid to talk about it. But guess what? I'm here today, I have some family members that are still touched by it. It's nothing to be ashamed of. I am an advocate for my mom. And there is a cure there. You have to have the greatest thing that Donna says is hope. If you have hope in life or anything, no matter what it is, my point is, Ask neighbors, ask friends, ask people. It is a great call. I know some of you people are looking at that picture. I was skinnier and I had a better tanner. Like, I don't look like that guy. I know. I can see you looking, trust me. But the money will help out with going to Tallahassee. It helps for the resources, the books, all the charge, everything. And then we have the consumer group and we have people traveling and going here and just getting out there. We have to market and get it out there. We have to be able to take calls. We have to be able to be resilient and ask questions and help them. Larry and I just taught a class. It was 12 people and we're getting calls. I almost called you last night, Donna or Paul, by the way, that we have families that still have questions for us that want to know if we can meet us two, three, four, five months later, they're in a crisis situation. That being said, don't be afraid to ask people. I've gotten $5. I've even taken $2 before. Donna will tell you, I'll end with this story because it's funny. Some people might not find it funny, but everything to me in life's funny. That's why I look at life because it's very short and precious. I had a, you're going to go, tell me you're kidding me, Eddie. I know you just say, so I was getting a colonoscopy about seven years ago in Winter Park. It's not graphic. And I'm like, my, I'm supposed to be at 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock. What's going on? I mean, what, what's going on? My doctor's amazing. So I'm laying there and I look at my sister and go, I'm getting really hungry. My older sister looks at me and she goes, I think you'll be okay. You have enough to keep going. You have enough fat on you. Everything. I didn't go into surgery till 6.30 at night in Maitland. So it had only been like 30 hours. On my stomach.
stomach of its land there and was a pledge form. Back then we had hard copies. And I looked at my doctor and I said, no. He goes, excuse me, all the nurses tech, they're all waiting. I need a donation. <laughs> and you talk about five people that gave me the dirtiest look in the world, like, excuse me, I need a check or I need cash right now for the NAMI walk. And you know what? If eyes could ever like go, you're kidding me. Because they wanted to go at 6.30 at night. They've been there at 8 in the morning. So don't go to that extreme, please. But my point is, that's how, you know what? You got to get out. When you believe in something that makes a difference in someone's lives, you really try to get out there. And, and that's really about it. That's my only story. I mean, you know what? It works. And I even pick, I have certain family members, and I have friends and neighbors. They don't have it. They don't even have $5, and guess what? It's okay, I understand, it's okay. But if someone can pay $8 for a Starbucks, I don't like Starbucks, sorry, I like Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> if you can go buy a friend, if they can go buy a pack of cigarettes or a Dunkin' Donuts, I think they can afford five, six dollars. So don't worry, I'm not in sales. I would never make it in sales. I don't like the word no, but that's about it. Does anyone have any questions about how we do it, or I'll Venmo, Zell, check, I'll drive to your house, and you name it, I'll go online, put in a donation, so anyone, anything? Larry? Are you taking money now? Yeah. <laughs> you already came.